Donald Trump, he's teased at, uh, at returning. He's going to make a decision after the midterms. Is he going to go ahead with this, do you think, or is he foxing? Uh, good morning, Pete. No, he's going to go ahead. Um, look, um, uh, uh, everybody in Washington, all the insiders, including uh, uh, the senator from South Carolina, and everybody says he's going to run. Hillary Clinton says he's going to run. The Wall Street Journal says he's going to run, and so does the New York Times. So, look, um, he was um, he wasn't a reality TV host for 12 years for nothing. He knows how to uh, how to tease out a moment forever. And uh, yeah, he'll 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 run unless uh, he gets indicted somewhere or he, uh, he he falls to health or something like that. Uh, and he's going to do pretty well. He's going to win a lot of seats in the uh, the House in, in in November, probably 37 to 45. And um, he'll probably uh, have a Senate that will be returned with him. So the uh, everything is in his favor right now. And, you know, on Thursday, Pete, is the first year of the Biden uh, administration. He celebrates his first year. And mm. at the end of one year, uh, President Biden is hanging by a thread. He, he, he's having a problem with inflation. He's having a problem with all of his uh, uh, opinion polls. They all say he's going in the wrong direction. Uh, everyone's worried about the economy and inflation which is now a 40-year high, which, of course, is not a surprise after you pump the money into the system. Uh, he's looking at a, um, a looming war in Ukraine, which I think is coming, uh, this, despite his, his last-minute efforts to try to do something about it. And so uh, uh, Biden is in a very bad space. In fact, uh, everybody, uh, everybody I look at in Washington predicts that he's going to be attacked by people in his own party who are fed up with him. Uh, yeah. Progressive left, of course, uh, reckons it was not only abandoned, but uh, he um, he double crossed them. Uh, well, they they think he they got him in, and he's not doing anything for them. Talk about uh, Back to the Future. You mentioned Hillary Clinton before, and uh, there has been reporting suggesting that she might be eyeing off another run if Joe Biden decides not to run, which seems the most likely scenario, and Kamala Harris too, because both of them are just not polling well. Well, yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they're polling terribly. Uh, they're in historic lows. Look, Hil Hillary has, uh, has, is ready to re-seize her moment. Uh, I saw her in one interview saying that uh, she'd like to do it. And, of course, the Wall Street Journal editorial, or not the editorial, but the op-ed piece there, sent up a kite. And she'd have a big following because she's got uh, something to prove. Of course, she's suffering from the neurosis all people do when they lose the presidency. They <laughs> they keep yeah. coming back at it there as that, much that, as they can. That but, right. Tennis's world number one, Novak Djokovic, has been deported from Australia after a judge upheld his second visa cancellation. The champion's hopes of winning a 10th Australian Open title have been dashed for now, just hours before the competition begins. Leaving the Park Hotel on Sunday morning, Novak Djokovic appeared calm and ready for his last-ditch appeal. Driven to his lawyer's office under guard of Border Force officers to watch a live stream of the court proceedings as his Serbian supporters gathered outside Melbourne's federal court, a sea of red, white and blue, they held up flags, chanted and even danced for the Joker. It took more than eight hours for the court to come to a unanimous decision. The verdict was delivered just before 6pm. The orders of the court are, one, the amended application be dismissed with costs, such costs to be agreed or failing agreement assessed, two, reasons to be published at a later date. Novak responded, I am extremely disappointed with the court ruling to dismiss my application for judicial review of the minister's decision to cancel my visa, which means I cannot stay in Australia and participate in the Australian Open. Novak Djokovic has arrived in Serbia's capital last night following his deportation from Australia. He left Melbourne on Sunday evening and travelled via Dubai. A small crowd gathered outside the Nikola Tesla airport in Belgrade just after 12 p.m. local time, waiting for the arrival of his flight. The tennis player was escorted by his entourage and made no comments over the cancellation of his Australian visa. The White House is warning Russia and Ukraine are on the brink of civil war and that no option is off the table to respond to potential aggression from Russia. The US Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, and Russia's Foreign Minister, Sergei Lavrov, 
are set to meet on Friday in Geneva after talks last week failed to ease concerns. Blinken spoke to his counterpart on the phone advocating for a diplomatic path to peace. The White House says the Ukraine crisis has reached an extremely dangerous level. President Putin has created this crisis by amassing 100,000 Russian troops along Ukraine's borders. This includes moving Russian forces into Belarus recently uh, for joint exercises and conducting additional exercises on Ukraine's eastern border. So let's be clear. Our view is this is an extremely dangerous situation. We're now at a stage where Russia could at any point launch an attack in Ukraine. The U.S. has called on North Korea to cease unlawful activities after Pyongyang fired two suspected ballistic missiles in waters off Japan's coast. In a call held with South Korea and Japanese officials, the U.S. called on Pyongyang to return to dialogue without preconditions. The latest launch is North Korea's fourth weapons test this month. North Korea has so far not responded to Washington's requests for talks. We're going to leave the U.S. President Joe Biden there. It's uh, just his second solo press conference at the White House, would you believe? Uh, and that is at the White House. We're going to stay in Washington, D.C., though, and bring in our correspondent, Annalise Nielsen, to kind of break that down a little. Annalise, your thoughts on that? Yeah, look, there were a few big angles to come out of that. Firstly, we did see again the president have his list of reporters that he was taking questions from. And so there was certainly a slant towards who he was taking questions from. But there were a few major points there. Firstly, he started off with an apology about the slow nature of accessing COVID-19 tests. It's never a good start when a president has to start looking at uh, the things that they need to apologise for. And he has ta really taken a hit in polling recently about his response to the pandemic. Even a recent Gallup poll has him being uh, the second least popular president since World War II in his first year, and that's only behind Donald Trump. But what was also really significant in that was his comments on Ukraine. He essentially said that the US is ready for Russia to invade Ukraine, coming in there saying that it was a matter of degrees of incursion, that if it was only a minor incursion, incursion they wouldn't look to respond. Mm. So that's certainly going to be something uh, that many would observe as being a green light for Russia to engage in some kind of confrontation. But he did also say there that they're going to look at increasing military capabilities around Poland and other NATO allies, and that they're still really only referring to economic sanctions in that. But that is a major moment for President Biden. Uh, I will say, I think the one thing he's going to keep getting hounded on is his questions around the supply chain, saying that shelves are 89% stocked across the country. That stat doesn't match the reality of what so many Americans are living. Shelves have been bare everywhere I've traveled in the last month. Even before that, it started to hit. Uh, I was just in Arizona. Most of the shelves there had big empty holes around the stores, and it's certainly a problem around Washington, D.C. as well.